Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video. Welcome back to the Penetration Testing Bootcamp, more specifically the Windows Privilege Escalation series. I apologize for the lack of uploads over the last two weeks. Uh, you know, sometimes I just have uh, quite a lot of work that is on my plate that I needed to, to actually complete, uh, you know, before I could actually resume. Uh, but I do apologize for that. Uh, and I'll be completing the Windows Privilege uh, Escalation series. And then on Wednesday, we'll resume with the uh, Web App Pen Testing series. Uh, and that is going to be our primary focus. So I think it's uh, much smarter for me to actually finish one series and then move on to the other. With that being said, we only have uh, like two videos left because I'll be covering, uh, you know, token impersonation in one video. And in this video, we're exploring the process of how to elevate your privileges through startup apps, right? And uh, more specifically, the, the permissions uh, relative to the startup directory. All right, so uh, if you have used a Windows system, you might be familiar with uh, startup applications and the startup directory. These are the um, these are the programs or uh, scripts that are you know that are essentially configured to run during a system startup. So whenever a uh, a user logs on, uh, you know that program is uh, is essentially launched. So um, as you can see here, uh, it essentially gives us instructions regarding how we should go through it. And in this case, it says uh, the first step, of course, is to utilize access check or the access check utility uh, to essentially check whether the, uh, the built-in users group for unprivileged users can write files to the startup directory. Um, so we're essentially checking whether we can make changes and therefore create a new startup item, a startup menu item that'll be executed whenever a user logs on. Once that is done, uh, within the Privesk directory on the system, there is a, a Visual Basic script that has already been created that will automatically add, as it says here, will create a new shortcut to your reverse.exe executable in the startup directory. So the this all revolves around this particular Visual Basic script. Of course, firstly, you need the permissions to create a new startup uh, item. And in this case, we're essentially adding a shortcut to the uh, to the actual, uh, you know, reverse shell uh, that we, we have been able to generate with MSF Venom. Now, if you are new to this series, please, uh, I would recommend going through the first videos as it explains uh, the general workflow of gaining access to the target system uh, via RDP, and then, of course, gaining access to the target system via a meterpreter session. Uh, but with that being said, let's actually get started with the first technique. So, uh, as you can see, I'm currently on the system here. And I'll give that a couple of seconds. There we are. It's running Windows Server 2016. Get use ID. Uh, we're currently the user here. Uh, user account just called user and privileges. You can see, uh, you know, this tells us that we are pretty much a non-privileged user. Okay, so I'm currently within the C drive. I'll navigate to the Privesk. Uh, let's see if I can find it. There we are. And uh, we should have the access check executable already transferred in for us. So I'll just open up a shell here. And uh, we'll give that a couple of seconds after which we can uh, we can execute access check. So DIR, let me just make sure it's there again. There we are. Uh, so access check uh, exe, and I'll just copy the EULA arguments here. Uh, so we're just going to accept the EULA and I'll just copy this here. So again, what we're trying to do firstly is identify whether we have the permissions or whether user accounts that are part of the built in users group uh, have the ability or the permissions uh, required to write files or to make changes to the startup directory, uh, which is uh, pretty much never the case in on a properly configured Windows system. So there we are. Um, let me just clear that out. Uh, hopefully, yeah, there we are. So I'll just type that in. So I'll hit enter. And uh, you can see for this particular directory that uh, the built-in users group has read and write permissions as well as all the other groups so the built-in administrator account there we are the built-in administrators group as well as the administrators uh, account also has uh, permissions there all right so now that that is done let's take a look at the next step the next step will involve launching this visual basic script now the problem with this is uh, i don't want to store my reverse shell.exe payload that i generated with ms7 uh, msf venom in the Privesk directory. So I have the RDP session opened up on the target and I'm currently within the Privesk directory. And this is the Visual Basic script. So 
let me just take you through it and show you what's going on. So I'll just zoom in a little bit here. So hopefully you'll be able to see what's going on. So you can see that it creates an object called wscript.shell. It then links the file. Um, let's see if that's displayed. There we are. It's going to uh, link the file. So uh, the, the actual file will be called reverse.link. Uh, then it's going to set the link and uh, you know it will use the object that, we, uh, that was created there. So uh, olink.targetpath is equal to c prevesc reverse.exe and then olink save. All right, so if you want to modify this, you can based on where you have stored your uh, reverse.exe executable. In my case, I'll change this to the temp directory, which I haven't created yet, nor have I uploaded uh, the actual, um, what's it called? Uh, the actual MSF Venom. Uh, just one second, that should allow me to save it as a Visual Basic script. Uh, let me just say all files here. And that is .vbs. Uh, let me, if I can type that in correctly. So there we are, VBS, save. Uh, yep, I want to replace that. Uh, I do not have the permissions to do so. All right, I guess we have to use the default configurations. I'll, I, that's actually quite weird because I'm logged in as a standard user. I can execute, but I can modify. All right, that's fine. Uh, so don't save. It's uh, under the Prevesc directory then. So in this case, we have no option, uh, which is really weird. So we're already within this directory. So I'll just terminate that channel and I'll give that a couple of seconds. For, for some reason, this interpreter session is really slow. Um, okay, so I'll say upload and I've already generated it. So uh, I'll just say home, Kali, uh, desktop, or actually documents. Try hack me, uh, Windows, Privesk, and shell or reverse.exe. All right, that's going to upload it for us. And uh, what's the name of it here again? Uh, that is um, reverse.exe. Yeah, that's correct. So I have the correct name specified there. And we'll open up the shell again. And we need to run C script. And we just need to specify the actual uh, create shortcut.vbs script there. So uh, I will essentially say C script. And uh, that essentially allows us to execute Visual Basic scripts from within the command line. So I'll hit enter. Um, so it looks like that is done. What we can do now is we will need to start up a listener to receive the connection once, uh, you know, reverse.exe is executed. Now, the key thing to note here is if I log on as, a, you know, an unprivileged user, then I will receive, a, you know, a reverse shell or interpreter session with those privileges, right? So what we need to do, we need to, as it says here, is we need to simulate an admin logon using RDP and the credentials that you previously extracted. Why RDP? Primarily because startup programs, uh, especially in the context of Windows, uh, you know, they really are tied into the Win logon process. So uh, what we can do is, in this case, we can try and simulate that there. But before we do that, let's set up the listener. So I already have a handler resource file or resource script, if you will. So I'll say MSF console R handler.rc. That'll just uh, set it up for me without any issues. And uh, we can then launch the command. So I'll just wait for that to, uh, we'll try and authenticate with RDP once this is done. So this will just automate the process of setting it up. There we are. That's the correct port. Um, and what we can do now is hit enter. I'm just going to hit yes. And there we are. That's going to attempt to log on. I believe we have to specify a password, which in this case, uh, the lab doesn't actually, you know, uh, it doesn't really uh, tell us that we, uh, that this will be a, an issue, but uh, you can see that, uh, do you trust this certificate? Yes or no? Fail to initialize NLA, that's fine. But, uh, you know, we actually need to specify the admin user's password which uh, again, that's one of the issues that I had with this particular task. So as you can see, it says here, and I'm not really changing anything, but uh, start a list on Kali and then simulate an admin logon using RDP and the credentials you previously extracted, which, you know, we already know where it is uh, or what these credentials are. But I thought that was uh, really strange of them to have uh, to essentially utilize that technique. Um, so let me just terminate that channel and uh, We'll give this a couple of seconds. There we are. And what we'll do is, uh, let me just check and see whether we can identify the credentials previously for the admin user account. 
Now, during one of the first videos within this series, uh, we actually were able to identify the admin password uh, within the unattended.xml file. If you're not familiar with that file, uh, this is a, a configuration file that's used uh, to essentially configure uh, or for the configuration of uh, you know in, uh, mass automated installations. And I've already covered that, but uh, that file is typically stored under C Windows Panther. And if I just uh, cat out the content of unattend.xml, uh, uh, you can see that in this case, it does provide us with the uh, admin account username, uh, which is fairly simple. And then, of course, the password, which is encrypted in base64. Now, I already you know, covered that process. Uh, so you can see that uh, in this case, we actually have the hashes, which we can crack. However, uh, I'm just going to say uh, vim pass.txt. And let me just put that in there. And we can use base64, base64 uh, decode uh, pass txt and the password is one two three right so we can essentially try and simulate that logon again um so uh did i terminate the uh, rdp session with x3 rdp or our our uh, our desktop sorry my bad uh yeah so it's password one two three we'll wait for that to provide us with a session and uh, hopefully that will uh, essentially you know execute the reverse dot exe so password one two three hit enter there we are we log on successfully uh, the auto run program should be executed or the shortcut rather uh, or the link however you want to call it um, so let's see let's see uh, i think there we are so it actually sends the stage and we should have admin privileges so uh, we'll give this a couple of seconds now i did mention previously uh, and i actually have covered this in its own video how to bypass uac or user account control uh, with UAC me. So you can actually check out that video. I covered it separately because it's a really fantastic tool and set of utilities. But if I say get use ID, you can see that we are, we're currently admin. However, the privileges, as you will see, are still the same. And that means that we need to pretty much, you know, uh, essentially uh, bypass UAC or find another way of uh, obtaining uh, entity authority system privileges. So. Uh, that is how to elevate your privileges by uh, essentially taking advantage of uh, poorly uh, configured uh, startup directory permissions. And I'm not, as I said, I'm not really a fan of this technique because it's very rare to find that uh, on Windows you can modify the startup programs uh, because that's typically reserved for the for the administrator, right? And uh, on, you know, by default on Windows, the administrator account is disabled. Uh, so it's going to be, you know, left over. Those permissions are going to be left over to the uh, to another user account that is part of the local administrators group. Uh, with that being said, that's done. So in the next video, we are going to be tackling both token impersonation, uh, you know, through Rogue Potato and through the print spoofer. And I'll be filling in with a few important things that you need to keep in mind. So that's going to be it for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions or suggestions, let me know in the comments section. If you want to reach out to me, you can do so via Twitter or the Hackersplay Discord server. The link to both of those is in the description section. If you'd like to support the channel, you can do so via our Patreon. The link to that is also in the description. And once again, thank you for watching and I'll be seeing you in the next video. A huge thank you to all of our Patreons. Uh, your support is greatly appreciated and this is a formal thank you. So thank you Shamir Douglas, Ryan Carr, Sandor, Michael Busby, Sid Saab, Doozy, Dafim Bari, Dustin Umpress and Michael Hubbard. Your support is greatly appreciated and you keep us making even more high quality content for you guys. So thank you.